Well, I want to welcome you to our program today. And we have two very special guests with us today. Uh, one is Rebecca Matthews. And so, Rebecca, so good to have you with us today. Yes, and the other one is Susie Wright. Hello. You know, very nice uh, to meet you, Susie, and good to have you here. And they belong, to, uh, they're part of an organization uh, called Set Free. And this is a program, an organization working very hard to stop uh, human trafficking. And human trafficking is becoming more and more of a concern, not just globally, but also locally. And so I just want to thank you for being on the program today and for your good work. And so why don't you just share a little bit about um, Set Free as far as you know, just what exactly you know, is this organization? How would you define it? Okay. Well, Set Free is a local organization that works to combat human trafficking. We're very Christ-centered in our belief system, but of course we're reaching out to anyone of any faith that, that needs assistance. And we seek to educate people about human trafficking, to advocate for victims, and then also to eliminate the demand for human trafficking. Okay. Yeah, so that's kind of a very good uh, three, kind of a three focus there as far as your approach. And yeah, so when we hear this word human trafficking and we're hearing it more and more, just how would you define uh, human trafficking? Mm -hmm. I don't know, Rebecca, if you'd want sure. to answer that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, um, with human trafficking, I think it's often confused with prostitution and mm -hmm. there's a difference. Prostitution is um, something where somebody is going voluntarily into this type of business, but trafficking is does involve prostitution, but it's where taking somebody beyond their control. Mm -hmm. So it's really um, taking and um, taking somebody. It could be through an abduction, um, and there's different types of trafficking. There's labor trafficking, but there's also the prostitution side. Um, so they can be in two different categories. Set free really focuses on um, the prostitution aspect of the trafficking and um, eliminating that within the community here and just bringing an awareness to the surrounding area that it does exist um, in the area and we realize it exists and educating people to prevent that from mm -hmm. happening, especially to minors who um, are vulnerable to become susceptible mm -hmm. to get into trafficking, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to just kind of piggyback on that eliminate there are three definitions among the United States government's law on human trafficking that it's your force, fraud, or coercion need to be present in order to define it as being trafficking. So using the, the prostitution angle of it, uh, there are definitions that, that are written on a federal government level and then on a state level, and then in some com cities it'll be on a, on a citywide level. Now, like here in Dubuque, we don't have a citywide level, but so that the charges would either be state or federal. And so those definitions of what human trafficking are, are defined by the government agency that's involved. But all, th all of them are going to have the force, fraud, or co coercion in them. Mm -hmm. And so looking at that will help make that def definition. And then in Iowa, pro when it comes to prostitution, any person who's a minor involved in prostitution, you don't need to have those three because the, the, the concept is, is that anybody who's a minor, it's automatically human trafficking. So that's really been a great step forward in the state's ability to uh, help assist victims in, in what's going on that way. So it really is <clears throat> forcing a person to go against their will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how did you get involved with uh, such an organization? You know, how did this whole passion begin for, for you? Mm -hmm. Well, for myself, mm -hmm. it, it started, I've always kind of been fascinated by the concept of why people would enslave others. But in 2001, I began hearing about the work that Jeff and Annie Dieselberg do in Thailand. They live in, in Bangkok, they're missionaries for American Baptist churches and my pastor at First Baptist Dubuque had known them and began introducing the work that, that Annie was doing with street prostitutes. And then she eventually evolved into 
to creating a business as mission model called Nightlight International. And that's started out in Bangkok, Thailand and has grown to include LA, Atlanta, Georgia and Branson, Missouri as hubs for where they work to combat human trafficking. And then in 2007, I was blessed with the opportunity to go and volunteer there for two and a half months. And so while I was there for two and a half months, we were doing outreach ministry right in the, the heart of the red light district. And, you know, so here I was, this person who felt uncomfortable walking into a, a, a just a regular bar in Dubuque finding myself walking the streets of the red light district and actually going inside the brothels of uh, mm. Thailand and mm -hmm. getting an opportunity to share Christ with these women. And with Nightlight's model of giving them not only the opportunity to hear Christ, but also being able to give women an opportunity to get a job and they would make, help them learn how to make jewelry so that that way they could leave prostitution, they could leave their traffic traffickers. Um, it's just been a phenomenal thing. And so mm -hmm. I've continued even when I came back to the States to fight that, that fight. And then about three years ago, Set Free was formed um, by some women who had come together, I think mostly through Hope Church. And I became involved in Set Free two years ago when I went to one of their trainings Mm -hmm. that they held and had then joined their board and then as of September 1st I am the new executive director for Set Free. Very good. Yeah. And you know, how about you Rebecca? Do you have anything more to add? I, sure. You've been to Thailand as well? Mm -hmm. I have, yes. I'm kind of similar <laughs> foundation. Mm -hmm. Didn't know Susie at that time when yeah. I decided to go to mm -hmm. Thailand but um, went to Thailand in October of 2015 and um, Mine was a lot shorter. I wish I was there for two and a half months because it's a quite long trip to get there. Um, I was there for about a week, worked with an organization out of Georgia um, called Adventures and Missions. And there was somebody who led the trip and, um, and she led the trip to Thailand in Bangkok, Thailand. So um, went to probably the same red light districts that Susie went to, to the two main ones. There's Nana and Pat Pong. And so we did some outreach there and just loved on the girls th that were there and learned a lot about the ministries that are actively working in um, in Thailand and one of them was at Nightlight we did visit there mm -hmm. and so coming back I, it was really hard if my heart was in Thailand and to know what was going on and I did not want to come back I just prayed God I don't want to come back and he said your mission trip is back home and I didn't know what that meant at the time but um, you know God has fast forwarded shown me that getting involved with set free and being involved with the community and it's it's great to have served overseas but it's even better to know that I'm serving back home here um, I'm from Dubuque born and raised and to know that I've been um, working with Set Free and um, helping women in the community here is amazing as well too. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great experience and um, so far and I'm very excited to what Set Free is doing and has done and yet to come with the next, within the next month or so, especially with the walk here that we're hosting. Yeah, so when you think about you know, you know places like Thailand and Los Angeles and Atlanta, just like, oh yeah, you know, I can see where all this, everything happens in those mm -hmm. places, right? In Las Vegas, and mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you think of this tri-state area, mm -hmm. like Dubuque and, you know, all the communities in Iowa, Illinois and Wisconsin in this area, and you generally think, well, I can, I can hear a lot of people say, <clears throat> well, that could never happen here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, actually the first court case that was successfully tried on human trafficking in the state of Iowa happened in a little bitty small county house mm -hmm. that there was this girl who had been trafficked down from the Twin Cities mm -hmm. and the sh some sheriff in, in one of the smaller counties had spotted a house that he thought was a drug house and when they raided the drug house they discovered this girl who was like 15 or 16 years old and 
they found out that they had like 60 people that they were ever able to charge and there were all these small rural communities so the sex trafficking was actually happening out in the county mm -hmm. not in the city now i mean we know that it happens in cities and mm -hmm. There's trafficking on a lot of different levels because you've got the, the concept of, okay, it's actually actively happening here, like maybe in a, in, a, in a local brothel. And it's probably tied to drugs, but not necessarily. But we also have to understand that because we're linked to Chicago and we're linked to Des Moines and we're oh, linked to sure. Minneapolis and we're linked to St. Louis, that we are a pass-through point. Mm. here in the Dubuque community and so we need to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. We need to be aware of things like the Galena, Illinois, which is you know this charming little stop right. that's great for tour tourism, is also a potential place where somebody who's maybe grooming a girl into prostitution will do so by taking her to Galena for a special trip. And you've got all of those great big estate-like properties mm -hmm. where there's lots of privacy to be had and pretty wild parties. Mm -hmm. So it's potential place for trafficking mm -hmm. to be happening there. Well, and here again, we try to <clears throat> maybe not get into stereotypes, but you know, when we kind of look at, you know, who's kind of vulnerable or is everybody vulnerable or what do you kind of look at? What people got more of a tendency uh, to be victims of this than maybe others or, or what would you have to say about that? You know, you know, uh, who, who would you kind of be concerned about here? Or, or is there basically everybody needs to be watchful or to say, well, my child would never get involved with this because mm -hmm. after all, they fit this good image of, um, of a young girl who's into healthy things. And so you know, I suppose that there's not any givens in this whole thing, but what are you kind of looking for here? Do you want me to answer that? Well, I can. Um, well, I think it's best to use wisdom and not to be naive. You shouldn't always think, well, that would never happen to my daughter because there's a lot of things that um, could happen communication-wise with a daughter and somebody else. You don't know who they could potentially meet, um, especially with the evolution of technology these days. Uh, you kind of mentioned earlier where you said, some people might think that would never happen in Dubuque or in this town. With the evolution of technology, it's, the com communication is huge. It's so easy to communicate with others. And not only um, can people be drawn into trafficking through communication, where you know the girl, the starter, might become friends with this cute guy, goes to different high school, but all they did is talk online, and it could not really be this guy. So um, also communication with um, exploiting the women and show there's a lot of dating websites and also like Craigslist or backpages.com where um, it's all about hooking up or dating and these women that are showing that they're wanting to have sex with people are really women being trafficked. So it's all an illusion that they're giving off. Um, so so basically social media is really one of those places where this whole thing has been exacerbated then. Mm. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that it, that's an exploding <clears throat> industry that's been able to make it a hidden mm -hmm. piece, you know, to where the, the used to see prostitutes on Main Street, you don't need to see them on Main Street because you can find them online. And so you don't have to be as visible in what it is that you're doing. But to kind of back up a little bit into your question, you did a great job of explaining like the prostitution side of it. And it's important to know that when it comes to human trafficking, race matters, gender matters, because age matters as far as what kind of trafficking you might become a victim of. There's a really great report that co comes out by the U.S. Uh, State Department every year called the Trafficking in Persons Report. And one of the things that it does is it tracks out and you can see which are the vulnerable people based on ethnicities, based on age, based on gender. So you can really see that white women have a tendency to be a higher number of people who are sexually tra trafficked. But Hispanic males have a higher tendency to be labor trafficked. Mm. And when it comes to boys and girls, 
everybody assumes little girls are, are much more likely to be trafficked than little boys, but statistically they've found that that's not true at all, that little boys are being trafficked through pornography equally with little girls. And that's really sad because people are not aware of it, and so they're not necessarily getting the kind of assistance that they need, mm -hmm. you know, because of the, it's very easy to hide mm -hmm. if you're a male. It's, it's much more shameful is to be that male model of, or people mm -hmm. make a joke of it. Oh, sure, you'll, you'll do this for them because if you're a guy, you'd be willing mm -hmm. to do this. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes young boys are not getting the assistance that they really, really need. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so the organization is set free, and we have their uh, website that you can go to to look, you know, to take a, you know, more of a look as far as you know, just going on the computer and seeing all of what they do. But set free, educate, advocate, and eliminate. And I know that you already kind of shared those terms, but when you think about educating, you know, how do you go about educating our um, society? about this very serious problem that we have right now in human trafficking. So I think a huge thing is um, that anybody can do it. You don't have to be you know, directly associated with set free, but um, it's just everyday communication and um, picking up and being aware of things that are going on with your family, uh, with your friends. And if you see something that's a little off on your radar, um, just sharing what you do know about trafficking um, and educating yourself by connecting with Set Free or going online. I know that Susie's very knowledgeable and that's through her experience of researching into things and um, like the report that she mentioned that is released all the time and or every year. So it's good to educate yourself by connecting with organizations in Dubuque um, and also connecting with what you can that's accessible mm -hmm. to you and then sharing that knowledge with others. So communication is really important. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. you know, that families are communicating, that parents are communicating with their children or that mm -hmm. you know, at, at church that we're communicating with our youth or other people. You know, just to continually be aware uh, of this and uh, so that we aren't going to be vulnerable or end up being a victim of this whole mm -hmm. thing. Sure. Yeah, I mean one of the things <clears throat> that we like to do with Set Free is that we're given the opportunity to go in and there's an organization locally called the Four Oaks and it's for kids who've got some issues. Mm -hmm. And we were asked to come in and first to teach the teachers because one of the, their staff recognized their teachers needed to know more. Mm -hmm. But after we came in and we instructed the teachers on here are some signs of human trafficking, they realized that their students were frontline potential candidates for um, being recruited into trafficking mm -hmm. situations. So they invited us to come back and talk and we were able to talk to the students and, and the guardians and have a conversation with the students and guardians and to teach them at their level. And you know, we've been invited to talk to schools and we've been invited to talk here and we really hope that people hear what's being said today mm -hmm. and feel inspired to do more, to say more, mm -hmm. to speak up, like Reba said, that if you see something that you're concerned about, ask somebody else a question. Mm -hmm. You know, make the phone call to the non-emergency police department line and just say, I saw this, is this something I should be concerned about? Um, going online, there's an organization called Polaris Project. Mm -hmm. They're another mm -hmm. really great resource mm -hmm. for getting some basic information about identifying who might be trafficked, what might you be seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's wonderful that you are here as a resource, and that's one of the things that I think all of you should be aware of, that if you are uh, wanting to have uh, Susie and or Rebecca come to share a little bit about their organization or what things that you need to be aware of, that they are willing to come, and it could be you know, at your, your local school, church, um, whatever the community function may be. Okay, so educating, it's so very important that we are communicating and being aware of all of what's happening here. But then we also think about in, uh, you know, being an advocate. An advocate's very important. So what does that look like? A lot of times that might be something as simple as uh, getting a phone call from Hope House, which is a local shelter in the area, 
and them calling us and saying, we have somebody who m may be being groomed for trafficking. Would you come down and talk to them? And talking them, and once you get a chance mm -hmm. to talk to them, then being able to find a shelter for them. Do you want to share about the Roots to Rise program? Yes. Um, so for the Roots to Rise, we're the former executive director. She's branching off and doing another project that's going to help people that are um, have been trafficked, and it's a trauma-sensitive yoga, and it's the main purpose is for um, to help women that have been through a trafficking situation and to help them heal, go through a healing journey. So like Christian-based yoga, and um, we're actually the board members. We're going through it right now, so it's an awesome experience and. Um, just through the sessions that we've had ourselves, and none of us have been trafficked, but we've had even like encounters with God through this uh, this experience with the yoga and how God is messaging to us and certain areas of our lives. But for these women, um, you, using yoga, you're you're using your body and you're using your mind and you're using your spirit to connect with God, and God teaches you things, and it just transitions them into. Um, taking control of their body because that was taken away from them, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. getting that um, that journey or that experience with God and having Him teach you something, and maybe it's you know whatever He wants to speak to you at mm -hmm. that moment. It's about an hour session, so um, Emily Denzer is leading that. She's been um, trained and specializes in this now, and she's we're going to be launching this off soon and. Um, it's really going to be that next step where we can not only um, educate but also advocate for these people mm -hmm. and help them along the way to that journey of getting back to um, yeah. just being whole and healed. Yeah. yeah, so through educating and advocating, and then hopefully we then are eliminating, you know, eliminating this whole human trafficking well, social problem that we have in our society. So I, mm -hmm. and so is that the idea then? Is to, you know, hopefully just to eliminate the problem then. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we can help people understand that the value of the individual person, that the value of themselves, and you know, and, and all of that is Christ-based. You know that that Christ created us. God gave us our beings, and if we treat each other as God created beings. Mm -hmm. There's no way that we would sell each other. There's no way that we would harm each other in that way. And so if we can help people see God in others, I think that's a really great way to be able to, to work in what it is that we're hoping that we can do. And, you know, exactly how that works, I mean, that's probably the, our most strong program that we need to develop is exactly what that would look like for eliminating some of it's through education that we hope to eliminate but we also strongly believe that prayer is a is a great part of it i mean that's mm -hmm. it's an important part of what we do when we come together as volunteers when we come together as board we are very strongly based in the idea mm -hmm. that this is a spiritual battle that needs to be fought yes in prayer mm -hmm. and but th there's practical things that need to happen too and maybe that's looking at legislation as a way of helping to eliminate it. Maybe that's a look at <clears throat> what, what kinds of businesses are allowed in your community. They're, you know, so we're open to suggestions sure. about how, how can we help eliminate. Yeah, very good. And they have an event that is coming up here very soon. And it is a um, walk to set free. And this will be on uh, Saturday, October 15th. And so why don't you share a little bit about this walk that's happening. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be held on uh, Saturday, October 15th. And it's going to be held at the, um, it's going to start off at the Rorschach Lobby in Dubuque. And we're going to do a walk around, um, it's going to go around 5th and we're going to go on White Street, we're going to make a big loop. We're going to go up 9th, past the Washington Park, and past the 4th Street, and then back and end at the lobby. So it's a silent walk, and um, for attire, we're all black, comfortable shoes, and um, it's going to be a, a solemn walk. So really, the, it's going to be a statement. It's going to be a statement um, for the silence that people who are in traffic, who are trafficked, 
how they are silent from freedom and getting out of that and also just as an awareness and just as a statement saying you know we know what's going on in the community we're going to fight for justice um, the event is completely free and so um, to register you can go on to setfreedubuque.org or you can go on our facebook um, page we've been posting the registration link uh, and um, th and then during the day we'll be having speakers come in booths so for people that want to learn more and want to get involved it will be a great activity and all ages are welcome yeah so raising awareness awareness about this uh, very uh, devastating um, social problem that we have uh, human trafficking but how set free is working so hard to bring hope and to bring freedom uh, to people and to eliminate this whole problem that we are having and so this walk that's going to be happening on October 15th, uh, Saturday, October 15th, is going to certainly bring awareness. This is a way that you can get involved and get engaged more, to learn more, and also to show your support. And so as we think about the support, here again we've had uh, their website up on the screen. And so here again I encourage you to, to go on, on their website and to learn more and to see how you too can get involved with this and how you can uh, show your support in, in various ways. And so here again, uh, this is uh, Rebecca Matthews and uh, Susie Wright. And so they are very involved with this, uh, Susie being the executive director. And so once again, we just applaud them. We appreciate all of their good work in, in this effort. And so here again, they are a couple of people who are really working and advocating and uh, people worth getting to know. And so I would you know, certainly encourage you to go on their website or, or to come to this event, uh, get to know them, to meet them, and, and get to know others uh, personally as well. And so, by the way, so uh, to you, Rebecca and Susie, you know, here again, thank you for your good work. Thank you for coming on today. This has been very enlightening, very helpful. Uh, learning more and more about this and so well thank you so much and and god bless you and thank you for joining us this day as well mm -hmm.